Hi there, it's Miss Jen. Today on Bible Club, we're going to learn about how powerful Jesus is when he heals. And one of the most important things we can do is remember that every promise in the Bible will always come and happen in our lives when we surrender our lives to him. We just say, Jesus, I want you in my life. And at that time, Jesus will come into your life, as simple as that is, and he will begin to change everything inside of your life and make it better and more and more amazing. So let's sing this song about surrendering all first. And I have the words here. It's a pretty simple song. Go ahead, Susie. <laughs> Jesus, I surrender all to him I freely give. I will never love and trust him in his presence. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, precious Thank you, Susie. So today in our lesson, what we're going to do is learn a little bit about how amazing God is when we need any kind of healing. And let's take a minute right now and just pray over that. Father God, we just thank you for this time, for this moment of Bible Club, for everybody that's tuning in to listen. Thank you, Lord, because Bible Club is a place where we can learn about Jesus. And you, Jesus, came to show us the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through you. And so let every person that's tuning in, their heart to be softened, and would you just plant seeds into their heart so that they can understand, have new revelation, new understanding, new wisdom of who you are. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So today's lesson is all about how Jesus came to bring great healing. He came and he said this, John 14, 12. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the father. So Jesus was going to come. He was going to die on the cross, as we all know. And his big plan was that we would then be the ones to go around and do the same works that he did by following his example, always. So everything that he did, he entrusted to those of us that believe in him. He said, all right, I'm going to ask you, Miss Jen, you've got Jesus, you've got me in your life, the Holy Spirit's there. Now go out and do the same works that I ever did. It says in Psalms 10720, he sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Okay, powerful verse. And then this one, Matthew 8, 16. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command, and he healed all the sick. A simple command. Some of us want to make things so complicated. We think it's got to be you turn around in three circles and you have to buy certain things. And then finally, maybe, or, or you must go to the doctor and ignore the Bible. Nothing in the Bible is that's not true. That only happened during Jesus's day. It isn't for today. It happened 2000 years ago and it happens today. Jesus came to give each one of us his power. And he says it over and over again in the word of God. But so many of us have got caught up in these ideas of how it has to be. We've got it all structured. But God says, Jesus said, I don't want the structure. He said to the Pharisees, stop holding me back, holding God's power in a box and just go ahead and let the Holy Spirit flow. And that's what you and I need to do as well. We need to walk in the authority that God gave us. It's super natural, not natural. In the natural, I, I've got a burn right here because I was pulling out some potatoes from the oven and I leaned down in the wrong way and burnt myself. In the natural, I, I'm putting on some vitamin E. But in the supernatural, I can say in the name of Jesus, this is healed. 
Sometimes it will disappear immediately. Sometimes it will take a little bit of going to the doctor, getting the right medicine, getting whatever it is that the medicine, like the doctor tells you, you need to get that prescription and take the medicine for the days. But Jesus came to say that you are to have faith and faith is the belief in what is not seen. We can't really see it, you know, but it's not wishing on a star. It's not blowing some dandelions in the wind and making wishes. It's not throwing a penny into the fountain. Jesus came to give you his power, his authority, and his healing. And it is up to you to choose to believe that or not. Just like it's free choice. If you want to believe him as your Lord and Savior, he's there for you. He wants you to believe in him. He's always like he hovered over this world to create it he wants you in his life he wants you to be part of heaven he wants you to have the very best that you could possibly have in this life but you have to choose him first it's free will um so one of the things jesus always did was he spent time with his father and that's what jesus wants you and i to do when we do it it's so simple you spend time praying and thanking him and you read the bible and every word in the Bible is true. And it will come true in your life when you believe in it and you apply it. But it's also true. And this was a good question I got from some of the kids in Bible club today. That if you choose not to believe in God or the devil or anything, you just are having a happy life and you don't want to choose to believe anything. That everything in the Bible that is promised for those that don't believe will happen as well. You have to understand that no matter what you choose, you're making a choice. There's no sitting around on neutral ground. The devil's always ready for you. He wants you to choose his plans. He'll make it crafty and cute and fun and amazing. And he'll seduce you to think that this is a better way. And God said, there is no better way but what I have for you. So I would highly um highly recommend that you choose Jesus. But that's just my recommendation. It's up to you to have the faith and to believe and say, yes, you know what? I want that. So let's take a look at someone who wanted it so much. I'm going to lower the camera now so you can see the flannel board. All right. So in the days of Jesus, when he came, he said, I want you to follow my example. And here he is. And his disciples paid close attention to him. His disciples wanted to know what he had to say all the time. And they listened to him. He was called rabbi. And that means teacher. And they, they believed him to a certain point. A lot of times, like all of us, we believe Jesus. We believe the Bible. But only to a certain point. When it came to the, some things, they had a hard time believing because of the way they had been raised. And that's the same thing with us as well, right? Maybe you've been taught a certain way by your mom or your dad and or even in church. And you just don't believe that everything I could possibly be saying is true. What? No way. Okay, so in the days of Jesus, leprosy was a big issue. Leprosy is a disease that eats away at your flesh. It ends up making it all eaten away, and really, really, you, you end up having to leave the city. The people were out. Jesus was out, out of the city just for this particular lesson, and the lepers were far over here. They were, they were forced into a camp called a leper's camp, and one of them came out, and he ran to Jesus and begged Jesus for healing. And the disciples immediately started moving away, you know, just like with with COVID today, everyone is six feet apart and they started to move far away. And he had to keep himself all covered up like we do. We when we had COVID, we had to keep ourselves with these masks on. And he said, if you are willing, I know that you will heal me. And the disciples were like, get away, get away, run. This is a bad thing. Because they knew that according to their traditions and according to what, how they had been raised, that each one of them, if they got even close to a leper, would not be allowed to go to church anymore. You know, if you got COVID and you got sick, you had to stay home and you were not to come to church. That is for certain. That matter of fact, they closed the churches down. Well, Jesus said to him, I am willing to heal you. And he laid his hands on him. And guess what? 
the man was instantly healed. Instantly. You know, later on, Jesus went to the cross. Many of us know that. You might have even seen this image in your church. But Jesus, it, he's covered in stripes. It says in the Bible that by his stripes, we are healed. Now, what in the world could that mean if it means that we don't really believe that we're healed or that it only happened in the first century? Jesus said that we are healed and he went to the cross, but he didn't stay there. And that's the problem. A lot of us don't get that he isn't in, on the cross anymore. He is in heaven. And he says, okay, after I died, and I'm going to read that verse again. It says, John 12, 14, 12, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, which is like healing and even greater works because I'm going to be with the father. So here he is in heaven with the father. And he says, if you will believe in me, and here's a little girl who believes in him. He says, you are seated next to me in heavenly places. And if you will believe in me, then I will give you all the authority I have here on earth. So this is true, true understanding and true believing is to understand that, that we really can find our healing completely when we believe in Jesus. So let's take a look at our craft today. You have power to put all of this into action. And so what we're going to do right now is I want to show you my sample. Here I have, this is a man with leprosy. Okay. And I'm going to show you what it originally looks like. I made a copy of two different guys. This one had leprosy and this one does not. Because what happens is the man with leper, leprosy, like I said, the leper, he's got parts of his body all horrible, eaten away. But when he came to Jesus, Jesus said, you are healed. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. And he says, thank you, Jesus. And his whole face changed and he was happy. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and let's draw a picture of this, okay? So I'm going to share the screen. Here's a whiteboard. And here we go. Okay. So let's make this picture. We're going to do two pictures. Here is one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little part here. And here's his hair and his eyes. And he's not very happy. Here's his clothing. And what he would have would be big patches. So you can color in with red or black, big patches. Leprosy would affect your nose, your ear, your fingers. And if you were a dad and you wanted to, you know, be with your family, you couldn't anymore. It was all over. And so you had to go live in this leper colony and your whole family, they didn't get to have you anymore as a dad or a mom. And children had to be abandoned. It was really awful. So he wanted to get back to his real life. And so he went to Jesus and Jesus said, you are healed. And I don't know if you could imagine how happy he must have been not to see that disgusting disease all over him again. He was completely well. And so let's write that out. So this is the leper and it's leprosy. That's how you spell it. And here he is. And we played a game. And I'm going to tell you the game in the name of Jesus. You are healed. Yay. All right. 
So you guys can look at that. You can do this picture. One of the things I did is, um, let me see. Now, how do I get out of here is a good question. Okay, there we go. So now, let's just open this back up again. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So then the next thing I had everybody do is I had them do it on one piece of paper and then they glue and they glue here and they glue here, and then you can flip it. This is the man with leprosy. And here's the man that in the name of Jesus, he is healed. Boys and girls, it is so important that you understand that in the name of Jesus, we are healed. And that when we follow Christ, we have all the authority and all the power that he had. And he wants us to declare with faith that in the name of Jesus, all our prayers, he wants us to declare with faith, believing that everything that we pray for, if it's what is in the Bible, if it's what he is calling us to pray over, it will absolutely happen. And it is so important that you open your Bible every single day and you read the Bible and you understand what it's saying when it says, um, the Lord is the Lord and he is magnificent. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the people, make them remember that his name is exalted. And I just opened the Bible to any section and started to read it. And the parts that are for you and I are the blessings, if we choose to, if Jesus is in our life. So I'm going to pray for us now. One of the games that I want to share now is uh, we went out and played a game of tag. And when someone got tagged, they had to lay down and they were frozen. And then if the other person could go touch them, that wasn't the tagger and say, in the name of Jesus, you were healed. And then the kid could get up and keep running. So it was fun. We had fun playing that game. And it's powerful to say that because the name of Jesus is all powerful. So let's pray that right now. Father God, we know that in the powerful name of Jesus, we have the authority to um, have power. We have the authority to pray. We have the authority to bless others. We have the authority to pray over animals. And we can pray over uh, if, a, if a puppy is sick, we can pray for the puppy. But Lord, we also know that you put doctors in place so that we can go to the doctor if needed. But we know that you are a God who does miracles and you don't want us to sit back and be passive. You want us to be active in our faith. You want us to believe what you came to do. You said, I give you all the authority. And in the name of Jesus, I pray for each person to have that authority. I also pray that if someone does not have Jesus in their life, he is not Lord, they don't know him, that in the name of Jesus, they will accept him into their life and they will believe in him and he will bring them to salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, that was Bible Club. Bye-bye, see you next week.